there are two issues here, listeners, that I feel we should discuss today. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Fuel prices have crept to 14.7 mm-hmm. quietly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mustafa Hamid is the behind it. Yes, he's not saying anything. <laughs> so they've, they've, they, you know, they suspended the, the levy, mm-hmm. but they've reintroduced the levy. Yes. Now, 14 cities per liter is very serious. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 14 cities per liter. We need is, to do a demonstration. If, if, you take, if you take where it was a year ago, uh-huh. 14 is very, very serious. Yes. Right. 14 is really high. And fuel pass through effects for everything is high. Mm-hmm. Then, the doom source situation. Yes. Yeah. The grid code letter that has been, I don't know what to call it, it's a leak, mm-hmm. but it, I mean, the whole thing is funny. Like, how three energy companies, the one in the middle, Writes to the minister mm-hmm. to come, and you know what's strange about this? The PURC had written to ECG on the 18th of March, yeah. asking for clarification on why power was going off and asking for a, a timetable. Hmm. You remember, mm-hmm. PURC had asked for a timetable mm-hmm. because they said that this so called 600 transformers that ECG claimed were faulty, they needed more details, they needed the geolocation, they wanted to be sure how do because we have about 28,000 transformers in Ghana, do you understand? Because a transformer is basically serving, so like where we are, a transformer will serve between here, the hotel next to us, and maybe 40 houses. Right? So it's not that big. So Ghana is a huge country. So if you said. So you're talking about like around Tesano. Yes. So like it, for, if you take a business like Tesano, there will be probably more than 20 transformers. Very okay. likely. So if you say 600 transformers in Ghana are the reason why we're having outages at the national scale, PRC will say, Are you sure? So it's PRC wanted to know more. Now, and then they asked for a, a, a timetable. Yeah. And then last week when I was on air, people said to me, Bernard, ECG doesn't produce timetable. It's grid cool. Because the grid is, and indeed, this is something that I checked in the energy, energy strategic plan. It's true. The, 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 the grid is controlled by grid cool. Okay? So ECG cannot of itself produce a load shedding timetable. Do you get me? But it was quite strange the, the 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 explanation or the reason that was given for the the, the doom so. Yeah. So the first telltale sign that something was amiss was the PRC letter, right? Yeah. Then, surprise, surprise, Greco writes a letter to the minister, mm. right? True. Because that, that last week we said that whether there is a power supply shortage or whether or not we need a low shedding timetable. It's not necessarily a minister of energy or ECG issue. It's a Greco issue. Now, the mandate of Greco, let me remind you, the mandate of Greco is one, provide daily assessments a day ahead of the projected demand and how available plants will be scheduled to meet the demand. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? You have about 12 different sources of generation. You have Akosombo, you have Kmong, you have Tiko, you have Tapco, you have Bui, you have... um, uh, all these netco and all, all no no netco the power plants and the power plants yes they are so people and all they that. generate mm-hmm. then gridco passes that through its distribution network or its transmission network into ecg they evacuate the power wonderful so gridco's mandate is like they are sitting between demand and supply mm-hmm. supply is the 12 or 13 power people have spoken to you about mm-hmm. i can even go through the list then the demand is through ECG. Mm-hmm. In the evening at 7 p.m., we are all at home. The weather is hot. They are watching TV. 4 p.m., the weather is hot. People are using air conditioners. So that demand, Gridco is the one that does the alignment. So Gridco can say, we have 2,800 megawatts coming from the six main suppliers. The demand from ECG side may be 3,000. Okay. So they'll tell you, shed 200. Otherwise, you compromise the system. So they perform a balancing act. So Gridco's job in the system is, and this is supposed to be done daily. And they're supposed to do it a day ahead because then, as we will tell you, tomorrow we can only give you 250 because two of our machines are not working. Akusumbo will say we can give you 300 because two of our machines are not working. Gridco has that information. So Gridco will know that we can only have 2,700. And they know that at 7 p.m., peak demand is 3,200. So they can say you need to shed 500. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So they must then provide daily assessment a day ahead of the projected demand and how available plans will be scheduled and then annual and quarterly projections of demand and supply balance. That's the word I'm looking for. So if there's a deficit, it is grid code that defines the magnitude of the deficit and calls on major centers to shed load. All 
right? Now, last time we asked, why has Gridco not been called to speak on the matter? They won't speak to the press. But some, for some reason, by some good fortune, the letter they wrote to the minister complaining that they had been giving ECG a shadow and EC, or, or asking ECG to do mm-hmm. a proper shadow for the consumer and ECG is not complying. And somehow that letter got to us. You see what's happening? So ECG now has mm-hmm. questions to answer. To first clarify the points that they raised to the PURC, for the PURC look for clarification, which I think Nathan read to us last two weeks, which ECG has to answer. And then in addition, whether it's true that what Grico is saying about the, the, the load shedding thing is true. The other question though is that if you look at Gritco's data carefully, they, are, they gave two specific dates. They mentioned 21st and 26th or so. This demand for load shedding has been from January. Right? So why has Gritco also been quiet? Why are they writing now? Do you get my point? So I'm saying that it looks like everybody's trying to <coughs> say it's not my fault, it's the other person's fault. Yes, ECG has questions to answer. But I also think Gridco owes us a few explanations. Right? Because if you read their letter carefully, it's like they are very they are saying, We've been telling these guys to do this and they've not been doing it for a long time. What have you done since that time? Mm-hmm. Do, do you get do, do, do you get my yeah. point? Then there's also the ministry's posture, mm-hmm. which ECG can also hide under because the minister's posture for a timetable has been negative. I don't think we need a timetable. Do you get me? Mm-hmm. So ECG can say well, why would I give the people a timetable when my minister doesn't really think I should do a timetable? Because they are wishing evil. Mm. And then the other point is the independence of PURC. We need to commend PURC for the letter they wrote, for their report that they issued. Yeah, Very ever since, what have they done? Good question. Don't forget, they gave deadlines. Yes, the, the deadlines deadline have elapsed. Passed, yes. What are they doing? So, you see, to build a country, you know, people say we shouldn't politicize power. How do you not politicize power? You, you do not politicize power by making the institutions be run by professionals who even though have a political head take decisions that are factual and technically sound do you understand so if you're an engineer running a power plant your training will tell you that at a certain level of demand i cannot produce this level of power or to manage the system well these are the things i have to do as a technical professional what happens in Ghana is that, number one, the politicians, apart from being the heads at the ministries, also try and populate these critical national assets with compliant political players. Yep. So they mix them. So you have people, highly professional at ECG, highly professional at Greco, highly professional at GMPC, but they also appoint a certain person who is there to do the bidding of the minister, and they work together. Mm. So they, they, because the politician knows that the stakes are high when it comes to power, and they politicize power. They use power to come to power. Yeah. Pardon the point. <laughs> they use power to come you get to it? power. So now, even when the facts are clear that the system is being compromised by the failing of ECG to give us a low shedding timetable, they will not give us a low shedding timetable. Bernard, is Gridco reporting to the energy minister going to yield any fruit? Because we've all seen the posturing of the energy minister himself who has denied the fact that there is doom so. And he's challenged people who think that they're experiencing the same to go and produce their own timetable. So if ECG or Gridco is writing to someone about ECG's intransigence or non-compliance, shouldn't it be perhaps to a higher authority? No, no, the Gridco has to write to the minister. Mm-hmm. And this is the thing. I think what Gridco is trying to say is that we are professionals. They are trying to say for us, we've done what we are supposed to do mm-hmm. based on the way the job has been defined and based on our mandate. The other point is that, you see, in Ghana, we are very funny. We use dooms or whatever we call it is politically defined. But when you have shadow power outages, South Africa, they don't call it dooms but they have outages mm. to save the system. But because we put politics out of everything else, yeah. we are now struggling to do what common sense asks us to do because we don't want to admit that the power crisis is at the same level as NDC or whatever. Yeah. But the truth is that the power grid doesn't respect politics. The power grid respects whether I have adequate uh, fuel, whether people can pay for it, and whether you can recover the cost. That's what the power sector respects. Mm. It doesn't respect whether you call it Mahama, Napo, whatever you call it, we yeah. don't care. So I am saying we need strong institutions. So people like PU Asim must be encouraged to stand up. Mm. Sky asked a question. They wrote a very strongly worded six page report, eight page, eight page report. report to ECG. But inherent in that, in that were about four deadlines. Those deadlines have elapsed. Where is the follow-up? 
Where is the CEO of the PURC? Where yeah. is his press conference? In a functioning society where your institutions are working, the PRC will come out and say, no, this is what we think should be done. Yeah. But in Ghana, it's big manism. Somebody will call from Flagstaff or somewhere and say, hey, it's Melaka, who's small boy, who's in front of hey, why should you come and tell us what to do? Hey, on your own party card, when then he too, you go and hide in the US or wherever he has to hide because he doesn't want to lose his job. Do you get it? So, I mean, you, you cannot cheat nature. You, you see, facts are clear. I am saying that professionals have to stand up and speak the truth and do what they have to do. Otherwise, we'll all suffer for it. All right? So, me, I don't want to take sides whether I'm Greek or ECG. Me, I'm nobody. I'm just Ghana. I think the ECG needs to issue a response if they have a response mm. to both what Gridco has said and to what PRC has asked. Do you get it? Yeah. Because now their credibility is on the line. You went out to say it was some 600 transformers that was causing the outages. Yeah. Well, that's not true because what Gridco is telling us is that they've been telling you to shed load and you've not shedding load. Am I lying? Mm -mm. So, ECG, what are you going to say? Yeah. So the transformer issue, that's 600 transformers, where are they? Have they been fixed? Because if you like read the Greek statement very carefully, yeah. and Greek is now claiming that if you don't give us a timetable, you are going to compromise the whole system. That's very serious. They, so, so they are not only accusing you of failing to do what you are supposed to do. They are saying that if you don't do it, you will destroy the system further. Ah! Man, this, this is the, it's, the statement it's, it's that also. Rico wrote to the ECG. So it says, in respect of outages attributed by ECG to 630 overloaded transformers during peak hours, ratings, so ECG is hereby ordered mm -hmm. to provide ratings and current loadings of their overloaded distribution transformers. GPS location of all overloaded distribution transformers. Mm -hmm. Ratings of the new transformers to be installed in each location. Timelines and duration for injection of transformers for each location. Load management timetable corresponding with the timelines and distribution for each transformer injection. Mm -hmm. And evidence of publication of 2.3E above to consumers. So 2.3e is the load management timetable corresponding with the timelines and mm -hmm. duration for each tra transformer. And, and this is the, and the evidence this is the PURC directive. Precisely. Did they give a deadline to ECG? Let me get that. Because in the in the rendition, this, this was to have happened somewhere in March. Yeah. Right? And then you now take the grid code letter. You know, the grid code letter for me <laughs> is very serious. Now, let me just read it for yes, positive. This is a letter dated 28th March. So that's just last week. Mm. Addressed yeah. to Energy Minister Matthew Poku Prempe. Nathan, if you have it, or let me read it. Yes. Dear sir, this is serious. So non-compliance with load management instructions from the National System Control Center. Hey. We wish to highlight critical issues regarding the load management within the National Interconnection Transmission System. The National System Control Center, SEC, the center of the NITS control operations of all players, including generators, distribution companies, and bulk customers. Now, here's it. We note with grave concern the repeated instances where mm. ECG operations personnel fail to follow load management instructions issued by the system control center, the SCC. This non-compliance poses a significant threat to the stability of the power grid, potentially leading to avoidable power outages for customers and system collapse. Kai, mm -hmm. it's serious, oh. mm. Very, very serious. System collapse, that is, if they continue this mm -hmm. thing, the SEC routinely communicates load management directive to ECG operations. However, these instructions are often either not effected mm -hmm. or inadequately implemented. This results in a decline in system frequency, triggering the operation of the automatic frequency load shedding relays. And the SCC, which is the send system control center, having to disconnect feeders serving bulk customers to correct the decaying frequency. Then they give examples. March 21, 2024, 759. The SCC had to take TAFO feeders out of service due to ECG failure to properly implement load management instructions. 
This resulted in a system frequency drop to a critical level of 49.47 Hz. March 20, 2024, peak hours. Similar non-compliance by ECG operations during peak hours forced the SEC to disconnect feeders in Tema, Winneba, Kasua, and Kumasi. This action was taken to prevent system collapse after the frequency dropped concerning 49.29 Hz. When these emergency disconnections occur, ECG publishes customer notices attributing the loss of power supply to Gridco, which is not an accurate description of the situation. Listen to this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when these emergency disconnections occur, mm -hmm. ECG publishes customer notices attributing the losses of power supply to Gridco, which is not an accurate description of the current situation. Furthermore, ECG's disregard for load management instructions is a clear violation of the, the regulations. Hey, so now they are even incriminating ECG. Mm -hmm. LI 1934, Article 9B, requires distribution and bulk customers to comply with the operational instructions of the utility grid code for the reliable operation of the transmission system. Mm. The National Electricity Grid Code, Article 1084, empowers the electricity company or transmission utility, which is possibly the grid code, to issue instructions to distribution companies and bulk customers regarding load transfer, demand management, disconnection, and restoration of load. We therefore by bring this to your kind attention, Honorable Minister, and seek your urgent intervention Mm -hmm. to ensure cooperation from ECG with respect to load management operations. Yours faithfully, Engineer Ebenezer Kofi Esini, CEO, copies to the Chief of Staff, Office of the President, National Security Coordinator, <laughs> Executive Secretary Energy Commission, mm -hmm. Executive Secretary PURC, MDE. Just this talking that is in finish now. <laughs> Let's talk to Ben Boachi, Africa Center for Energy Policy. Ben, good morning. Good morning, Ben, and good morning to the team. Yeah. Charlie, what is going on with this letter that we have seen? What, what is going on? Is it that Gridco is trying to absorb itself? ECG has been exposed or ECG is being victimized because they've been trying to help the system safest? What is your reading of the overall situation? No, I think, I mean, as technical people at Gridco, what I'm reading is that they are telling everybody you cannot do politics with a transmission infrastructure. Because that is the backbone of, of electricity to everywhere in the country. And if there's a system collapse, everybody gets affected. Uh, you know, so uh, they want to communicate that and be clear that when there is a shortfall uh, in uh, supply, it has to be managed by the uh, utility that has contact with the consumers, and that is ECG. And, and their role is essentially is to communicate that uh, to uh, ECG. And consistently we have said that one of the process-minded institutions in Ghana <coughs> is Gridco. Because at every level, they let you know how much power is available. It's not just ECG. Everybody in the sector can know how much power uh, is available, how much load potentially could be shared at any particular time. So all the generators, they are logged on to a feed that allows them to know what power plants are working and what the load situation actually looks like. So without even Gridco calling ECG or issuing instruction, if they are also careful to understand what the system is throwing at them, they can then manage their own customers and their own service area to say that, I mean, we're seeing a deficit and therefore we need to manage uh, the load somewhat. Uh, you know, So that is really the situation. In fact, between 2015 and 2017, Grid Coast system was live. So you could log in on to your website and you see all the power plants that were working. <clears throat> you could see the deficit. I mean, it was graphical. You could see everything that was happening in the grid. <laughs> so nobody needs to tell you that we're going to need to shed load. You can see it on their system. Every citizen could see it uh, on, on, on their website. It was this bullying and politics that made them shut down that system. So it, you now have to now get into the system at the back end to be able to see uh, what is happening. Or if you are not part of the industry, then you don't get to see what is actually uh, happening in the grid. But the reality of the matter is that we have a deficit in generation. And we've been communicating this <laughs> for the past almost two months, that if there is deficit, the thing to do is not a technical knowledge you need. <laughs> you just need to tell people that we don't have enough generation and therefore we have to shed load. It's not a technical stuff. It's just being plain honest about data that is available to us. And ECG has been dancing around it 
uh, Transformers today, it is unexpected what tomorrow. And Greco says enough of that. And that's why they've been forced to do this. I, I've had people demanding timetable from Greco. They, they are not our customers. <laughs> you know, uh, ECG is the one that has a contract with us. And they are supposed to communicate whatever shortfall there is in the system and be able to manage that. So Greco communicating to the utilities to say that we don't have enough power for you because they, there isn't enough generation. They finish their job. And on a weekly basis, they plan ahead. So they tell you seven days prior what the scenario looks like, how many plants are available. Either there will be deficit and then also give assumptions how we can mitigate any potential deficit. For example, they can say that if we have fuel, we'll be able to bring on X, Y, Z plant to be able to fill the deficit. All those things are told to the industry a week ahead. And the reports are there. Everybody has it. Everybody in the sector, including ECG. They always get it every week, the system planner. So they know exactly what happens in the state. But they refuse to communicate and act responsibly. So and when, when, where does this leave the original reason? Because I remember ECG was talking about some 600 transformers. And I think the PRC even wrote to them to clarify the locations of these transformers. I think they were trying to say that the problem was a transformer issue that were faulty or something. So by this letter, does that transformer excuse get blown out of the water? Because it seems as if that has been exposed not to be true, right? I think it's a few hours doubted those transformer excuses. That's why they asked for the geolocation of all the transformers. So they, they can see. They ask them to publish the location of those transformers. So that when ECG says they are repairing your transformer, you can just go to your nearby transformer and see if there's somebody there. They have refused to do that. So they were just hiding behind the transformer issue. I mean... It is possible some transformers, if you are running over 30,000 uh, transformers, it's possible some will go down at some point. Uh, you know, but to communicate that 630 of them were faulty and nobody needed to know which one. Because the fact that you even know should make you more responsible to the, co- uh, the, to the consumer and tell them where the, those transformers are and what mitigation actions you were taking. But you won't communicate that to us, even though you know, you have counted them. You know where they are. All the transformers are coded. You know where every transformer is. And you've been able to identify them. And PRC says, give us the locations of the transformers. You know, even meters, you know where every meter is in Ghana. So why was it difficult for them to give us the location of those transformers so that people can know mm-hmm. what is happening in their locality? So I think it was just a face-saving exercise just to mm-hmm. uh, uh, brush aside the key issue of deficit in generation. Do you expect the... Energy Minister to do anything. I'm asking this based on the, the his posture, I think a week ago, when a journalist asked him about Doomsaw timetable and he wasn't really interested. So, I, I, the whole thing is funny. PURC, sorry, um, Gritko is reporting ECG to Energy Minister, who himself is not interested in the timetable. And the accusation is that ECG is not giving us a timetable. Does Gritko realistically expect Energy Minister to direct ECG to do this? Or they are doing it to more save their own face technically. And <laughs> if, if you get my, my question. Yeah, I get it. I think for me, what I see with this is that Greco is just trying to communicate officially. And that we've been telling you what, what the problem is. You know that there is deficit in generation. I mean, the ministry cannot say that they don't know that there is a deficit in generation. And so to absorb themselves of the blame that you know, have been thrown at them, they just want to of- officially document that and put it at the table of the minister to say, if you are ignoring all the signals, you are ignoring all the reports, ECG is not responding. Here is our communication. I think that is really what it is. What the minister does with um, the letter, I don't know. I don't know how he will react to it uh, subsequently. But the fact of the matter is that Greco has communicated consistently with the system. And it's real time. It's life. Everybody can see the deficit uh, and its impact on the grid. And for Greco, if they don't shut down specific areas to cut down the load, the system will trip. <laughs> there will be a system collapse. And they wouldn't watch that to happen. So they expect that you who has a contract with the consumers will begin to plan so that you can isolate um, some strategic installations. For example, if there's a hospital within the feeder, this is the only uh, entity that's able to isolate the, 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 the strategic installations. Because Greco's feeders are wider 
So they cover, for example, if you're targeting Adenta, once you shut down the feeder in Adenta, everywhere else in Adenta goes up. But if you have smaller transformers, so they can target specific areas and isolate any installation that they think is critical. All right. So a hospital can be isolated. A military installation can be isolated. Any other thing that ECG think is critical can be isolated within their network. But people cannot do that. They have to shut down a bigger feeder that affects a wider area. That's why they prompt ECG to do the load shedding and load management so that they don't have to do it from the control room. But from the control room, everybody within the catchment area gets affected. So if they see that there is a shortfall of 200 megawatts, for example, they look for a 200 megawatt load and then take it down so that the system doesn't collapse. Wow. So the proper thing is for ECG to take up that responsibility so that they can be able to isolate those strategic installations and be able to uh, manage the load for everybody else. So so what's going to happen now? What I mean, and I, I, the president, I'm sure, is, is observing all of this, right? Mm. Is How do you salvage such a situation where the, the distributor is not willing to give a low shedding timetable, the transmitter is asking for it, the minister is not really interested as well, and meanwhile, the situation is not really improving, right? So, I don't know. Is it the poli- I mean, if we people, if we had a low shedding timetable, I guess it will make the situation more bearable because they can then plan, right? But if you don't give us a timetable and the light just goes off, it makes it more annoying. So, in a way, by refusing to give us a timetable, they're actually worsening the effect because if you even want pop- I mean, if, if Doomsaw will make you unpopular, and Shadow Doomsaw is probably worse than Shadow Doomsaw, I guess, right? Yeah. No, I think it's, it's important. We need to force ECG to come up with a timetable, all right, so that all of us can plan our lives, so that we can strategically position certain installations and allow them to function if we don't want them to be affected or impacted uh, by the load shedding. It's also important. You know, we export some power. <clears throat> We're doing around 400 megawatts of export, which was bringing in forex. Now we cannot do that export. And we can't also <clears throat> communicate properly to those countries, how much we can give them on a daily basis. All right, so for them, it's even worse because you, you don't even know how much power is coming for you to uh, uh, communicate to your people how you're going to share the load. So I even read an article where the CEO of uh, Sonabel was telling the citizens that he's sorry, but it's difficult for him to even plan for them because they are relying on Ghana and Ghana decides what to give them at any particular time. And going forward, they have to think about getting their own installation, their own power plant. And that is proving to be the only option for, uh, for now. And they will pursue those strategies to make sure that they have their own generation. So we are shutting ourselves out of the export market as well because somebody cannot manage the system uh, for us to be able to keep that market. The people who are paying are the ones who are being shut out. And those who are taking the power and cannot pay for it are demanding more power and not even refusing to communicate the shortfall to us. So we have to force ECG to issue the timetable so that everybody can plan and allow our export market and players to also plan how much power we can give them. Finally, though, you notice that the grid code letter does not indicate why the load has to be shared, as in whether there's a, dis- a, a, a generation challenge. But I think it's implied, is it not? Because it would have been easier for all of us if the grid has said because of the generating shortfalls we have had to ask ECG to do this so it doesn't give us a sense of the length of time it just gives two instances of march 26 and march 21 whereas you would have expected that this has been going on since the end of last year so maybe you would have expected a more elaborate explanation of why this timetable is important because over the past few months generation has fallen below although that may not be their job maybe the energy minister knows but for the public discussion I think there has to be an admission of the generation shortfall as well so that we are clear in our minds where the solution is. Because once you are not sure why there's load shedding, then your solution is also all over the place, right? And again, institutions like parliament can then be able to intervene and say, if it's a generation capacity matter, is it the money? Do you understand what I'm saying? But right now, everybody's just trying to save their own face and the people of Ghana suffer, which I think is a really, really sad situation, Ben. Yeah, I think for Greco, the data is available. <laughs> I mean, to all the players in the sector, what fuel is available, uh, what plant is available, how much capacity can come out of that plant, is available to all the players, including the ministry. And they publish that every week ahead of time and give the scenarios and what needs to be done if you want to 
avert any uh, shortfall in generation. So I'm not sure they wanted to repeat that. They just wanted to remind the minister that based on all those reports that we have been issuing, the writing is not being done by the one who interfaces with the customers, who interfaces with industry, who interfaces with the consumer. So they have to do their job to make sure that we can plan the country and not shut down anywhere. Because Rico can be at liberty to continue doing what they do. They control the country. They can shut down anywhere without worrying about it. But if you are concerned about being strategic in how you share the load, it's only EC that can do it. It's not Rico. They cannot isolate critical installations, as I indicated. So based on those reports and the fact that the data is available, we know how much gas is coming in. We know how much stock of liquid fuel we have to be able to generate what amount of power. So I don't think they needed to go beyond that, but to remind the system that we are ignoring the data and we don't want to use that to be able to shadow uh, 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 our, our load management. And that, is, for me, is enough. Finally, I have some of the um, various plants. Where is the shortfall coming from? I know we have Akosombo, we have Pong, we have Bui, we have Asogli, and then we have the TTP plants, we have the TAPCO, we have the TICO, we have the Pon, Car Power, AXA, SEM Power, and all these people. What's the problem? Is it that we don't have money to buy fuel? If it is, what which fuel can we not buy? Which of the plants are not running? Do you have a, a sense of the generation challenge? Yes. So we have a deficit um, in the generation uh, system because, one, the gas that we have is not enough to power enough power plants, uh, you know, to bring up the 3,700 megawatts. Uh, that we need. So at all times, we need to have some amount of liquid uh, to be able to generate uh, enough electricity. And the liquids are often not available. Um, some of the power plants are under maintenance, but of course, it, it happens. They, they will go under maintenance. But the fact of the matter is that we have plants that can come on stream to replace those ones that are under maintenance. But we don't have fuel for them. So I think fuel is really uh, the major concern uh, at this point. Uh, and how we navigate that to be able to address uh, uh, the challenge you have now is money. You need money to be able to buy the fuel. And the power that goes to ECG, uh, you will see them publish numbers of how much they are paying to everybody else. But the fact of the matter is that what they are paying to everybody else is about 50% of what they need to pay. <laughs> right? So where do we get the 50% left to be able to pay the value chain and be able to buy fuel uh, on, in addition? It's the problem. Uh, that we have on our hands. And without fixing that problem and being able to raise the needed money to do that, uh, it's going to be difficult. And over time, government has been coming in to intervene and buy fuel and the rest of it. But the reality is that once government buys the fuel, it's money lost because it won't be recovered. All right? So government keeps paying, uh, uh, you know, electricity bills for people who are essentially stealing the power and not accounting uh, for it the illegal disconnections that are happening that are creating all the losses. Government then steps in to come and pay. If you look at the publications that PRC has been putting out, government's bill every month is about 250 million Ghana cities. And this is money that could have gone into building social infrastructure. But we're using it to pay for electricity. I mean that government struggles to pay. And we are asking for more by demanding fuel uh, from government to be able to uh, generate electricity. When electricity is, uh, is business everywhere, in, in a certain manner where we think government can always bring money to come and buy fuel and then, you know, it gets lost in the distribution value chain. Thank you, Ben, for your insights. As ever, Ben Boachi, Executive Director of the uh, Africa Center for Energy Policy, spelling the issues out very clearly. Uh, for us, time check, it's uh, 8.43. Caleb will give us some announcements. Uh, you, I, I, saw, you, I saw the swing of emotions on your face listening to, <laughs> to Ben. You know, it's a really difficult situation we are in this morning. Several of your messages are coming through and Nathan will help us with some of them. All right, this one says, Hello, CTFM. Gridco can only give a timetable when the issue is generation or a transmission problem. Gridco has no control over the distribution network which ECG claims the issue is distribution transformers. Okay. Hmm. Kenneth Nashoman says the ECG information management is why the deputy energy minister has been made the chair of the ECG board. This is why Gridco will leak their letter to the minister. Hmm. 
If Gridco is expected to issue a timetable, then the problem is a generation problem. The timetable will be a doomsaw timetable. PURC's request for a timetable isn't a doomsaw timetable. It's a timetable for when portions of the network will be taken out and overloaded transformers replaced with bigger ones or additional transformers injected mm. into the system. Stephen from Kaswa. All right, this one says, you are right on the politicization of state institutions. It's the reason why most institutions are not working. Technical people are not allowed to work and they only come in and enrich themselves and give jobs to their crew. Imano from Osu says, I think Gridco telling ECG to prepare a load shedding timetable is just to throw dust into our eyes. Oh. The real truth test with the power producers whether there had been a change in their production and whether that had influenced this, these changes. Okay. Mr. Avle, good morning to you and your team. Uh-huh. I want to register my displeasure about the Doomsa situation in Aguna Suedru. Mm-hmm. It's between yesterday night and this morning, mm-hmm. the lights have gone off. And come on seven times. Mm. My mini refrigerator is even spoilt. I live around the Suezco area. Why does the light keep going on and off? Why does the light keep going on and off? You need to file a complaint with the PURC. Mm. And um, try and Submit establish... evidence of the spot free. Exactly. Establish a link between the power outages and your... your, 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 your yeah, that's right. And then the PURC will pick it up. Hmm. And then once they do their investigations and they establish that you have a positive case, mm-hmm. then appropriately they will hold the ECG or whoever is responsible responsible and compensation and replacement now, where appropriate. How long is this process going to take? How swift is it? Oh, well, I mean, it is hoped that they will act within reasonable time. Let me do. Let me mention, it. though, that, you know, we asked the question about PRC and their directive to ECG. Yeah. So PRC has published that there... Some and, updates. Yes. So this is an uh, ab- update on order, order number two. So ECG had been asked by PRC to do a number of things. Mm-hmm. For example, ECG had been asked by PRC to produce copies of all government directives to ECG mm-hmm. for the purchase of fuel power for, fuel for power generation from August last year to date. Mm-hmm. They, according to the PRC, that has been documents have been submitted under review. Mm-hmm. PRC had also directed ECG to provide information on the total amount of fuel ECG procured for power generation within that same period. Mm-hmm. Again, documents submitted under review. Mm-hmm. PRC had also asked for all fuel supply contracts, mm-hmm. documents submitted and under review. Mm-hmm. PRC had asked for invoices, details of fuel quantities, cost dates and volumes delivered, and all pertinent details. Mm-hmm. Again, documents submitted and under review. Now, PRC had also asked for details of all bank accounts mm-hmm. and investment accounts currently yeah. operated by ECG. <clears throat> Again, documents submitted and under review. And they had also asked for monthly bank and investment statements corresponding to each account showing balances for the period. Again, documents under review. So those were compliance in respect of operational matters. Mm-hmm. Then they had also asked for detailed incident reports of power outages between January 1 till the date of March 26. Again, according to the PRC, ECG has submitted those documents. It's under review. Again, ECG had been asked by PRC to provide information on the volume of load curtailed for each power outage incident, energy not served, and number of customers affected, segregated into the various customer categories. Again, documents submitted under review. Now, the second group of orders was in respect of outages attributed to ECG mm. to the 630 overloaded transformers during peak hours. Again, PRC had asked for ratings and current loadings of the overloaded distribution transformers, the so-called transformer thing. Mm. PRC is telling us that the ECG has submitted those documents. They are under review. PRC had asked for the GPS locations of the yes. transformers of yeah. all overloaded transformers. Yes, we need that According to PRC, ECG has submitted those documents. Mm-hmm. PRC is reviewing it. Number three, ratings of the new transformers to be installed in each location. Mm-hmm. So it means they are replacing them. Again, the ratings have been submitted. And finally, timelines and duration of injection of transformers, documents submitted. Now, what is not clear is the load shedding timetable they asked for. And there's no comment on that. Mm-hmm. That was order number three. Mm-hmm. We don't have an update on order number three. So that suggests that ECG has not complied with that yet. in the now, meantime yeah. yeah another more you see the seventh is on the line bernard and that we are talking to him about this yes. other matter fuel prices yes. going up with petrol selling at 14 cities 15 pesos per liter mm-hmm. and diesel is going for 14 cities 74 uh, pesos the story is simply saying petroleum consumers in Accra are expected to witness another hike in prices of products effective april 4 
2024. This comes after the National Petroleum Authority, NPA, reversed its decision to suspend the price stabilization and recovery levy on the price buildup of petroleum products. In a letter dated April 3, 2024, and copied to various stakeholders in the oil marketing and distribution industry, the regulator, MPA, directed them to apply 16 pesos per liter of petrol, 14 pesos per liter of diesel, and 14 pesos on every kg per liquefied petroleum gas. In the wake of this, state-owned oil marketing company, Goyle, has adjusted its prices of petrol and diesel, selling at 14 cities 15 pesos per liter and 14 cities 74 pesos per liter respectively. Now, the price adjustment, according to Guel, took effect on April 4, 2024. It's expected that the other OMCs in the country will also adjust their prices to align with the directive issued by the NPA. So, Let's talk to Nana Muisi, the seventh yeah. executive director of the IES, on this matter. But Nana, just before I, I ask you about this, you remember last two weeks when I interviewed you, you had asked for a Doomsaw timetable. Now, of course, I've spoken to Ben about this already, but I'm, I'm sure you've seen the grid code letter to the Minister for Energy asking ECG, basically choking ECG, that ECG is not going to comply. I mean, based on everything you know in the industry, what do you make of that letter? Will it get anywhere? Uh, good morning to you, Ben, and to your listeners. Uh, personally, I'm unable to assure Ghanaians that uh, any directive at ECG will be followed because the PRC was the first to issue a major directive and that was on a timetable to the ECG to provide. Unfortunately, the minister was clear in his mind and thought that the ECG would not provide any document um, of such a nature. And uh, if Bernard needs one, he must go and produce one. So we see um, the ECG being restrained by the minister uh, to do what is expected of them. Now it's come from Greco to the same minister's desk, asking uh, uh, the minister to help them get ECG's uh, support in one way or the other. Um, unfortunately, we can't vouch for ECG in following that directive. We are not sure whether that directive will work this time around. Let's get to the reason why I called you. Fuel prices have gone up again because the MPA has reversed its decision to suspend the price stabilization and recovery levy on the price buildup. I mean, what, what do you make of this? Indeed, was this price stabilization and recovery levy even necessary at all? That's the question. That is, does it mean is it even necessary? For which reason the suspension has been reversed? The, the first, the suspension of the levy, um, as we see it, was not well thought through because uh, it was clear in the statement that it was intended to, uh, you know, uh, relieve consumers of impending price hike, which is necessitated by happenings on the world market as well as our own forex market. Then the OMC increases the fuel in response to the domestic foreign market and the international fuel market. Unfortunately, a day or two after, the same NPA comes to say we are reversing the suspension of that uh, levy, which is meant to you know, uh, cushion consumers. This time around, the MPA failed to pro provide reason for the reversal of its own uh, initial uh, decision. Quite unfortunate. But then you asked whether the levy is necessary at this moment. For us, over the past year, we have not seen any impact of this levy on fuel price. That. Uh, it's not been able to stabilize price. Uh, price shot up as high as uh, 18 cities per liter somewhere in 2022, uh, mid 2022 to end 2022. And we are seeing the same, uh, uh, you know, experience now. Uh, unfortunately, anytime I speak to you, Bernard, I don't want to sound uh, pessimistic. But then we use data. We use, um, um, we reference a lot of papers and the happenings 
uh, within our environment to make our projection. But then we believe that uh, the levy has not been able to correct any situation. Hence, we believe at a point that it could be used for something else apart from seeking to stabilize price, which it has, it has not been able to do. What it does now is they use the same levy to support uh, the, the distribution of premix fuel, for instance, for fishermen. Meanwhile, this fuel, the fishermen don't even get. When you do your survey, you will find that uh, the government is barely supply uh, 10% of their need. And so we don't know what the need of this levy is. Maybe it's about time to direct it into something else. Then we look for better way and sustainable way of uh, preventing fuel hike domestically. So with the removal of the suspension, to what extent should we expect fuel prices to go up now? I mean, it's now 14, uh, uh, what do you call it? 14.6 uh, something per liter for petrol. And then I think it's uh, 14 pesos on every kg of LPG. Where, where is this going to go? I mean, you've said in, uh, that the, the stabilization levy was not even stabilizing. But now that they've removed it, to what extent should we expect prices to increase? I think we are now 14.75 per liter uh, for, for, for diesel, 14.15 per liter for petrol. You, you realize that last two days when gold increased their price, um, it came to a certain point around, uh, let's say, 14.45 uh, or something for diesel. Then yesterday they woke up to the news of uh, MPA reversing uh, its earlier decision on the levy. And so what will happen is they have to go back and add all those uh, 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 levies back to the fuel because it's been reversed. It, they quickly need to go and add it up to the price build up. And so what is going to happen is that um, fuel is going to increase again. Few have done it already. Others are, are, are yet to do that. An additional roughly on average term for both uh, of, for diesel, gasoline, and, and uh, LPG will rise by roughly 14.5. Uh, press west. And so poor price will see a double increase in a window. So th- this is, t- times are going to get much tougher for a while before they get they get better. You can't tell when it will get better, but we know it will, it will get tougher. Um, Bernard, you, the price stabilization recovery levy is just about 15 press west, roughly, uh, on a little of fuel. What the, the, the quantum of um, depreciation or decline in value of the city against the U.S. dollar is huge. If you get 2% depreciation of the Ghana cities as against the U.S. dollar, you are talking about roughly um, 11 to 14 pesos already. Then it comes to uh, what comes to Western is, is the international price of uh, fuel, of which we don't have control over. We are price takers. And so anytime the world market price uh, goes up relative to diesel, petrol, and LPG, we are sure to see uh, a rise on our domestic market. Then the forest losses also come to Western. It. And I'm sure you know very well that we sell uh, the fuel in cities but it is imported in the dollar uh, in the dollar currency, and so that forex exposure must be computed at all time, particularly when uh, there are declines in our own city. And so we must look at how we are going to uh, probably manage the the foreign supply exposure and also the forex exposure. These are two things we must manage. As for the price stabilization and recovery levy, it can't do much, unfortunately. So if the currency keeps depreciating and if world prices of crude keep going up, we should, we, that's, that's where the real issue is. So that's what we should keep an eye on, not even the, the little uh, levy that has been brought back. And, and that's the case. Use world market price of fuels, not use the crude oil. Sometimes crude oil price goes uh, down, yes. 
uh, price of gasoline and gas oil uh, can go up for one or two reasons. It may be for supply constraints or stock levels dropping uh, and or probably, uh, you know, bias increasing at the point. And so let's use the world fuel market instead of the cruise. Anytime it goes up, uh, we are sure to uh, base it by same. Until we build our own capacity and our own domestic uh, supply of fuel, we will still be, you know, at the mercy of the international fuel price and dynamics. Thank you for talking to us. Nana Moisi, the seventh, is the chief executive or executive director of the IES. So it's like a double whammy this morning. Uh, the increase has been by some 16 pesos per liter, and it could get worse. We just pray for the best. But fuel prices are going up. And you know the funny thing? Because it's hotter. So it's a couple of things. I, I, I don't know if you've noticed that these days, the afternoons are very, very hot. Oh, yeah, they are. So you see, that's, that's the point I want to make. Mm. Look, the government is taking all of us for a ride, yeah? They are taking us for granted. You have a situation where you manage the economy to a point where it crashed or almost crashed. We needed to get support from external sources to give the economy some life mm-hmm. support, which we are on presently. Mm-hmm. As a result of that, the CD is in a mess. And you see that every single day when you go into the market to buy US dollars. And because of that, it is affecting the price of fuel. Mm-hmm. Mm. Now, once that happens, you know that the cost of living will go up. Mm. Recently, teachers and some other labor unions were on strike because they said that their salaries were no longer taking them home together with many other things, conditions that they face in the workplace. Many people's salaries have been wiped, about half is gone, because of how the economy of this country has been managed to this point. You understand? So we are experiencing the hardships that we are we are we are experiencing because of how the economy has been managed mm-hmm. and that is impacting what do you call it the cost of what fuel yep because the cd is no longer holding itself against the dollar very soon transport companies will start increasing start, exactly yeah, now what where, where is the linkage mm-hmm. now bernard was talking about the heat in the system Charlie. many companies are now having to turn to diesel and mm-hmm. petrol mm-hmm. to generate electricity so that they can stay in business diesel they have already sent some people home. Yeah. We heard that in, in, in the news recently that a number of companies have had to sack their, their workers yeah. because of the economic situation. Mm-hmm. These are the same people who are having to bear the brunt of recent increases in the taxes that we pay. Mm-hmm. If you go through the list, Charlie. Parliament made several amendments to our tax laws. Charlie. Some of them include what? The value added tax, uh, 2023. The act was passed by parliament. The excise duty amendment number two, act 2023, has also been passed by parliament. The stamp duty one. Exemptions have also been introduced in some cases when we are complaining about what? Mm -hmm. The level of exemptions in the country. And then income tax also affected. Now, these companies that are paying all of these things, they don't even have constant supply of power to ensure that they are able to produce enough to stay in business. Serious. They are now turning to what? Diesel. Yes. To they are t- they are turning to what? Petrol, in mm. order to stay afloat. Now the cost of that has also gone up. Wow. You cannot supply regular power to them. Mm. The economy is in serious distress. People cannot just afford the means of sustenance in this country, and for some reason, the elements that are coming together to create this problem. The government is unable to deal with it. Now, let's let's look at the issues. Mm-hmm. There is insincerity, there is indiscipline, there is indecision, and there is intransigence. Hey, hey, let hey, me hey, let hey, me hey, break hey, it down. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> insincerity, insincerity, indiscipline, indiscipline indecision, and intransigence. Let me take them one after the other. Oh, mm-hmm. The insincerity we heard from Ben Boache. Straight. He told us that there is a generation gap. Yes, please. There's a deficit. Financing issues. Exactly. Now, if you are a responsible government Mm. or you are managing that space, what do you tell the citizens of this country? Good people of Ghana, 
This is the problem that we have. Me na me kind. The woman's the voice. Woman get the woman's voice ready. Woman. No, she, she said it to my house. <laughs> yes, but we can. Me na me kind. So me boy. Yeah, we make the decision. Sorry, sis. Uh -huh. <laughs> you are sitting at where we are generating the power. Mm. You know there is a deficit. Sorry? If you know that as a government, come to the good people of Ghana and say that. Look, the truth is that over the last eight years, we thought we were going to do so much to increase generation. Hmm. We have done some part. We have not been able to do it fully. We have a gap. Because of this gap, we are having to ask you to endure for some time hmm. a load a management timetable. While we fix the problem. While we fix the problem. Yeah. They are not insincere enough to admit they are that. not sincere enough. Uh -huh. mm. Sorry, thank you. <laughs> they are not sincere enough to admit that. They keep telling you that, look, the system is stable. We have generation, we don't have generation problems. Everything is in order. As recent as, you know, two weeks ago or a week ago, ECG issued circular to, you know, members, uh, what do you call it? Customers. Oh, yes. Asserting that, oh, look, everything is in order. The system is stable and all yeah, of that. So local challenges. Exactly. When they knew call or ought to have known. They say, they say when, you say, when you have a problem, call your local. It's like, like there's a fault. Localized uh -huh. fault. Localized fault. Mm -hmm. Exactly. When you knew or ought to have known that, look, there is a problem. There's a deficit. So we need to plug and the it. localized fault okay at the same time all over the country. <laughs> uh -huh. So that is the issue, Bernard. That is the insincere aspect aspect of it. And the second one is what? In, uh, in, uh, and then indecision. Uh, indecision. Okay. So indecision. Now, if you knew that the problem is this bad, and according to me, if Great Co is to be believed, mm -hmm. you ought to have known that, look, at this point, we do not want to compromise the national system. Mm -hmm. We heard from VRA mm -hmm. when Akosombo Dam was threatened by the deluge from the north of the country. Mm -hmm. They said that they could not sit down and wait for the system to break the dam down. The, yeah, the, the, the they never allow the dam they to wouldn't break. allow it. Yes. So they opened the floodgates. Ali? So many people were displaced, and people are still struggling till today because they believe that they were doing the right I thing. Want to save the dam exactly for all of us. Now, if you took that decision, and we want to be consistent. Then we should expect that if the system is going to crash, because the system is overloaded, because we are not generating enough power, and yet we have opened the floodgates for everybody to enjoy electricity because we want to keep our political faces right, then at the end of the day, you would record the problems that we are, we are talking so let me about. Get you right. You're saying that the, 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 the load management is similar to the managing the flow of the dam. Exactly. That because you don't have enough generation coming in, you need to have a timetable so that you keep the system in equilibrium. Yes. But so long as you decide to use politics to manage it, mm -hmm. you could break the dam. Yes. So that and this is what Grico is saying. Exactly. So and this will yeah. break the national system. Yeah, but yeah, what okay. you talked about. The grid. It was even in the statement yes. of the letter to the minister. Yes. And if that happens, the, national stand system. the whole thing collapses. Our economy will collapse because we cannot simply fix it in good time in order to ensure that everybody gets electricity. So that level of in indecision, mm. we have to blame ECG for it, we have to blame the minister for it, and we have to blame the president of the republic for it because he is the man presiding over all of this. Mm. He goes into cabinet, and of course I would expect that the cabinet will be told that, oh, Mr. President, this is the situation we pass supply. Mm -hmm. If the Minister for Energy is not telling him, then you would expect that Minister for Trade will be telling him that, ah, the traders are complaining, the industry people are complaining that, look, we are not getting enough power supply. So, Mr. President, what do we do about it? Mm -hmm. If he is not hearing it from the Minister of Trade, then the Minister for the Economy, uh, the, what do you want Finance. Fi Finance would have been telling him that, ah, the people are saying that, look, things are getting difficult. They cannot do A, B, C, D because of this. So let's do something about it. If it is about getting money to, 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 to deal with the problem, they would have taken a decision. But this level of indecision happening at all of these levels is leading to where we are currently. So that's indecision. Yes. Indiscretion. Uh, no, 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 now you are going to okay. No, it says it's, no one is intransigence. No. Okay, so we are going in, to in, in, in insincerity, mm -hmm. indecision. Mm -hmm intransigence yes. and that was the last one I, I, I will talk about uh, what you call it indiscipline now in this indiscipline okay. yes the indiscipline is stemming from what Grisco is alleging okay and then also what PURC has told ECG to do which they've still not done which they've still not done 
Grito claims, and I'm not sitting there to believe or not believe them, we are, we are dealing with the facts in the public domain, mm -hmm. that they have consistently been telling ECG Charlie. that puts some of the lights out. Right? Based on the schedule we've given you. Yes. Inform are, the people so that they know. They are not doing it. PURC had told them earlier that, look, it seems to us that you are shedding load on the blind side of everybody. Mm. People can see through the veil. Make it available to us a timetable. As we see, it has not been done. Mm -hmm. The PURC tells us uh, this morning that, yes, they have submitted some documents. But compliance with the directive, they have not complied. Compliance that is in discipline. The low shedding timetable has not been... Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is in discipline. Mm -hmm. And per the act establishing the PURC, they have the authority to sanction ECG. Mm. But the unfortunate thing is that when they, they slap the, the sanctions on them, mm -hmm. you and I are having to pay for that because, of course, it would affect the cost of electricity. Mm. Because they're not going to reap the money from the sky. Maybe they take it from the They side. will take it from us. And that is where the problem is. And you would expect that on this particular matter, if someone is deliberately standing in the way of what is proper, that person should be removed. But for some reason, that is not happening. So the level of indiscipline that is happening within the system is part of the reason we are where we are presently. And the last one. Do you think that's that, why the board chairman of um, ECG resigned? It could well be. I, I have not spoken to him. Yeah, but, uh, Bernard, you know, Kelly is a very respected, you know, fine brain yeah. within, you know, corporate Ghana. Yeah. And he would not associate himself with something as a murky as we are seeing. For seven years or so, they have given us a semblance of stability mm. in the power sector. All of a sudden, all kinds of things are happening. Mm. And it is like G Gridco is not respecting ECG or ECG is not respecting Gridco. And then directives are being issued. Qatar directives are coming in. Mm. The minister is also saying his own thing. Disrespecting the good people of Ghana. Mm. So if he for some reason decides that for personal reasons he's resigning, yeah, you, you can understand. You that. can always infer that maybe there is something amiss. The whole thing becomes like a second. Exactly. The final one, Bernard. The intransigence. Mm. Mm. That's a strong word. All of us can see that there is a problem within the system. Yeah. The minister knows or ought to do know yeah. that we have either a deficit issue yeah. resulting from the fact that we are not we don't have enough supply coming in and therefore something has got to be done. But when journalists took the microphone to him to ask him, what did he tell us? He told us that after the ECG timetable yeah, we are not bringing it. If you want to bring it, you know what to do. Go and do your own timetable and bring it. Otherwise, you want evil upon the country mm -hmm. now all these facts that we have heard this morning all these facts that i have stated here relying on what is in the public domain the minister i believe is a competent person and he would have been seated with these facts on his table that look we have a deficit issue mm -hmm. oh it is because we don't have enough money to buy fuel or gas is not coming in or some people are doing repairs on their plants because of that it is affecting output what it means is that grid co will be sending out a deficit mm. what it means is that it would affect how much electricity ecg makes available mm -hmm. to consumers mm -hmm. and therefore there is the need for a timetable yep. the minister must have known this yep. and yet he looked into our face and told us that the people who are asking for timetable are wishing evil for the country that is intransigence Knowing that this is the situation, you have the authority to do something about it yeah. or recommend that something be done about it. Yeah. You don't do it, and then you tell us in the face, let us go and do our own timetable. This is completely unacceptable. And you know, it is sad because all of these things are happening mm -hmm. at the time you would expect that a government that says it wants to break the eight, a government that came to power on the back of power issues, I remember so well, how bad things were eight years ago. With, with things propelled this government to come to power. Mm -hmm. the, 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 look, play the voice that the, the woman, so buru buru buru, play that voice. Woman. Yes. So, this was 20 years ago. I was a market. 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 I was a market.
all you need to do is to take take the name of mama out and put a pufado in and then it, it works the same. When, when you when you say that there's a problem then they say you are ndc yeah. or you are they attack you it's the same thing so the politicians they do the yeah. same thing you know and it's, this government is even hardly easier because Muhammad had a lot of demonstrations, yeah. a lot of angst yeah. like, against him for this. And it's like people have become cynical and tired. Yeah. So they, they, it's like, you know, we just can't wait. But this, this, it's, it's really sad. It's really, and the other point is, you know, while we dilly-dally and do all of these things, it's going to affect investment into the sector. So things are going to get worse. Yeah. Now, if I'm a bank and I'm supposed to if let's assume somebody wants to come up with a power plant, right, that will probably work with gas or will work with crude or will work with lean gas or whatever type of, L L L L L L L L whatever, the credit committee would take a very serious view before they agree for money to be spent on any power plant to mm. generate for Ghana. Because the chain of ECG even collecting the money and people paying a lot of the power plants have had to threaten. IPPs have had to form a chamber hmm. to even make noise before they are paid. So what that means is that power is going to get more expensive because investment, new investments in power will suffer. Yeah. Because the sector is so politicized, any financial institution, whether local or abroad, that wants to invest will probably put in place so many things to secure itself. They may even ring fence, ECG revenue. All right? They may talk about other things. They may ask for... That's why we may have take or pay contracts. Because the risk profile of the financial uh, of, of the energy sector when it comes to financing has gone up so much because of the politicization. So whilst we, we want to score political points by claiming there's no doom so and saying Muhammad's time was worse and all of that, nobody's gonna give you money. Okay, and, and, and there's no there's going, and the other point is that you need maintenance and new investment. Now if you are paying people only fifty percent of what they are to be paid. So, for example, let's put it this way. You and Sky come up with a power plant in Bone, which generates maybe 150 megawatts and you feel it into the national grid. There's an agreement on how you should be paid. Maybe you are paid every three months or whatever. Now, if the payments are not forthcoming, your shareholders are losing money. Now, if there's time for you to even do a, a what do you call it, um, uh, a maintenance, mm -hmm. you may not have the cash flow to do it. You may not even have enough money to pay your salaries. Talk less about getting fuel. Because once you're paid, so you see, the thing is a complicated thing. And you see, we have a diverse power source. There's the whole, about 13 sources. But the problem is those who require money. I mean, Akosombo is easier because Akosombo is generally water levels and the turbines are running. But that's about 500 megawatts. Same for Bui, which is like a picking plant and then a uh, bong. But the larger majority of our plants is either crude, liquefied natural gas, lean gas, or other forms of fuel that you have to buy. Mm. If you are not paying them on time, they don't have money to buy new sources. West Africa gas pipeline and Nigeria decides to cut. So this whole agreement that we had gas that were flaring, think about it. You, you had uh, oil fields in the West, right? And we need to commend Ghana Gas for the work they've done, all right? Now it's a fully Kenyan company where now we are trying to do a reverse flow so that the gas that we generate in the Western Enclave can come to the power plant in the Eastern Enclave. You get a point. So the whole thinking process around even some of these things took us long to figure out. So the cost of credit to the power sector is going to go up. You guys, so 
whoever wins this election, if 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 power plants don't have money to buy fuel, you don't have power. So you are going to inherit a power crisis. Hmm. And this is what Ben and Co have been saying. The sector demands, as Sky said, sincerity. All right. When it comes to money, you follow the money. I am very worried about the future of that sector. All right. Then there's the whole conversation about energy transitions. Where is the investment going to come from for even things like renewables? Hmm. All right. So I think our commitment to energy transition is not that strong because <laughs> the renewables may initially be more expensive to set up, but in the long run, uh-huh. over 20 years, it's easier. So solar, I mean, where is the investment for KNUST to think about producing solar panels at a cost that will be competitive to what the Chinese produce? Even companies that bring in solar panels, they are taxed very high. What's the, what's the largest solar plant in Ghana? It's less than 10 megawatts. Mm-hmm. Okay. Strategically, a country that's gone through all these fuel problems since 2013, our solar capacity is still very low. The leading countries with solar generation capacity, China, Germany, Denmark, they don't even have enough sunlight. It's, the sun is shining so much in Accra. You are using more AC. I mean, I don't understand. You get me? So strategically, even long-term power, the, 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 the the ambition to do a transition to renewables, I think, is not strong enough. Why? Because I think there's a vested interest in the fuel economy. People feel like they will make more money in buying fuel. And therefore, whilst everybody in the Western world is moving to transition... There's no commitment. I don't think there is. Because it will change the equation of money making. So people put their personal money making ahead of the long-term strategic this is energy security the focus on of energy policy should be energy security national security to say look we we cannot depend on only one or two akosombo has served us well all these power plants in takradi and co have served us well but we also need a strong investment in renewables nuclear yeah all right for strategic reasons mm-hmm. because you want a, you see the whole thing is about accessibility availability and affordability the thing must be available that is generated That's then necessary. it must be you can generate you something but it cannot be it cannot be reach my house so you can have a, you can have a okay the grand inga dam is a massive dam in congo mm. if you don't connect that dam to a power plant or to uh, if you don't dam it in a way that can then transmit the power to mm-hmm. us yeah you can generate the power but we don't have access to it do you understand? Then if you generate it with a loan that is 100% interest rate, we can't pay for it. So it's not available. It's not affordable. All right? So your strategic national security for energy must have the right mix. Solar, nuclear, gas, crude, all of those mixed together. In a, and then you must even have a geographical distribution. So gas from the west. So you must even have... A, a central, so not all your power must be on the coast. And these are things that every country does. But for us, it's all about who wins the political argument and who, who in whose tenor doom so was worse. And by doing those things, you compromise the grid, you compromise the professional standards that are supposed to operate, and you also sacrifice your long-term planning. Because how does a country with so much sunshine, which is the raw material for solar panels, which is baking us in the day, our solar potential is less than two percent how and th- we've known this for 50 years you get it how and where's the investment in the panels in the batteries where's the long-term commitment to that not because it's even cheaper you can put all schools on the grid all hospitals all 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 services you can even inside and look let's use the fossil fuel to do industrialization, the textile companies, the fruit companies, the biscuit companies. Let all banks, let all radio stations, let all schools and hospitals be on solar as a strategic national plan. Energy Commission has all of that. But we just give the nice speech when we go back. You see, the interests are for now, they want to buy fuel. Somebody wants to build a power plant. Somebody wants a deal. If you have this kind of deal mentality, you think you can be power sufficient in the next 30 years? Do you see where I'm coming from? It's investment. If we invest in solar, it will help. We don't want to do it. And even we are thinking of a revenue. So sometimes your short-term revenue objective, milking every import dry with high taxes, 
affects your long-term plan to diversify your power sector so that people bring in solar panels so that can even learn the technology so you see where it is so gra is doing one thing mm -hmm. this is the coordination that's what senior minister does he says no even though we want revenue we also want to strategically secure our power sector so let's waive some of the taxes on these imports let's give ourselves a five-year window where we can even produce the panels here so that we can do polugu uh, all the places in the north can have solar uh, maoli went to uh, borga last week he says when you reach tamale the the sun is like you've opened an oven hey heat is unbearable we are complaining about the heat we cannot convert that heat into, into any energy countries in temperate zones are even using solar more than we do it's because our leaders don't prioritize the long-term future of the country. They, it's, it's a contest of interest masquerading as a contest of ideas. It's not principles. It's, it's, it's interest. So after all the shouting we shout. It's all about the deals. That's what I think. Because, look, go to Energy Commission's website. Everything I'm saying is there. I'm not The things I'm saying is not because I'm intelligent too. It's because intellectuals have already written about it. And the people who are supposed to implement it will not. Because it doesn't serve their short-term political interest. You see where we are going. Mm. So that's why academia, media, civil society must engage this very... And I want to commend ASEP and then uh, Nana Moisi and Co. Oh, yes. they are, they've been very consistent. And ASEP has been shouting for years. They have generated reports. Look, you don't even have to be an energy expert to understand any sector in Ghana. You don't need to be an energy expert. Because there's so much information. You get it? So I really want to urge that now that we are in a campaign season, let's focus on the things that will solve our problems. Not scoring political points alone. What will, so what is the long-term plan for diversification? Because guys, whether it's Mahama or Baumia or Alan, 2025... They are, they are things waiting for us. Yes! So they, they, they have to even manage expectations. I'm telling you, based on what I know about even the financing of paying of our euro bonds and things. Okay, so... I, I, we waste so many crises. COVID came. We made a lot of noise. We gave a lot of speeches. What did we really use COVID to do to even secure food production or for a long-term transformation of anything? Doomso came. What did we use? What, you get me? So like when a, when a problem comes, a problem is the... So crisis is an invitation for change. Because when you have a crisis, people can understand... For example, your Russia-Ukraine war. The Western world thought they were being smart. They encouraged Ukraine to do what they were doing. They realized that Russia, they gave Russia sanctions. Gas from. Yeah, yeah, well, your biggest supply of gas ahead of winter is from Russia. So what did they do? They said, hey, if we sanction Russia, we can't get gas. So, okay. We will not necessarily, we will go back on energy transition. Let's go back to, let's go back and burn coal. Because after the Africans, whatever we say, they will agree. So they went back and started burning coal and said, well, energy transition is good, but for now, we have to survive because <laughs> energy... Then we, then we go for conference and go and sign. Energy transition, hey, Ghana is doing well. They will vote for you. Ghana is the best... You are not serious. People, it's a fight for survival. People are doing everything to survive the winter. You, you want to cut a deal so you can get a lot of money and be politically powerful. You are, your whole society is compromised. You are not strong. You are not powerful. You see where we are going. So they will do what to suit su their interest. We will not. We, 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 and we hail the people who do what undermines our future. And we are sitting here happy because they are from our hometown. You see how we've been brainwashed? You see why we are suffering? If we don't wake up and start calling, speaking truth to power and say, guys, the way you are managing this sector is wrong. Stop the tua tua. We, we are in big trouble. Accra is hot yesterday. Headache. I went to the uh, 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 Accra Central. I regret. I said, what am I doing here? Heat. <laughs> so now you have to put AC in your car. Fuel price has gone up. In your office, you are putting on AC. You can't even... Gen you can't and this is energy you are wasting. Energy can neither be created or restored. This is the basic thing we learned. Energy can never be created or destroyed. It can only be converted from one form to the other. This is basic science. So you have a lot of sun burning you. It hasn't burnt you enough to think of vary your energy that. sources you are still you are still doing gas to you get me you are you are you are you are it's still a very cash heavy and people are investing in power plants because they want to work now no bank can finance it because the government cannot pay you see where we have what we've dug ourselves into a hole look at the power build-up increments akusumbo still gives us the largest chunk as a single entity and for 57 years we've not been able to diversify we've gone many plants but they are all more expensive. Incrumers is the longest. It gives us the most and it's the cheapest. Think about it. Of all the power sources we have, when you look at the, the, the scale, 0 to 500 is Akusumbu. 
Everybody else gives out below 300. And Akosobo is the cheapest, is the longest standing, and is the cleanest. That's why VRA will say they will not let it collapse. That's why they will spill. Because if Akosombo collapses, we are dead. Because if without Akosombo, where will you get money to pay the Nigerians for the gas? The gas that you have been producing, you are flaring it. Think about it. How do you think that you are producing gas that you are going to sell? And you are flaring it, burning it and wasting it. And you even think that you needed to connect it to your power source. Because some of your power plants, indeed, when you created a power plant, you didn't have gas. So you were even using uh, crude, uh, like uh, fuel, which is liquid. Then, somehow, you're able to retrofit it to make it dual. Some will do gas. And it took you like five years to do all of that. A country that plans and thinks ahead. Go and read the seven-year development plan. Incremental thought about all this. So we, you know, we are masters at winning elections. We are not masters at thinking about solving our problems. And the churches, the media, all of us, we have, we have become part of this sham. This sham that is not solving anybody's problem. A facade. And every year it comes. Trust me. Go through this. The, go do a time series of Ghana. Every four years we have a crisis. It's either energy or liquidity. It's, there's always a crisis which we are not able to solve. And we continue in this cycle. Whoever wins the next election is inheriting a big crisis. By 2026, you'll be back on air saying the same things about if it's not a banking it will be about power or it's about something else why why can't we solve our problems because we put the wrong people in office we help them we don't speak the truth to them we are afraid of them we can't do that we have to speak the truth and stand up that what they are doing in the energy sector is bad they have to stop it so that we can have security yesterday i was in the newsroom the guys were looking at my face charlie what they have i lost charlie you know they be <laughs> everybody's broke Everybody, it's like telling why they're looking at me. So I said, Bro, I don't know. They are like, they don't understand. There's no money. They are working, but there's no money. And the salary is not is not reaching. The salary is in the share. Yeah. It, so everybody's doing three jobs. Working in the hospital, he's selling so bolo. <laughs> he's also put some full set in his boots. And he's harassing you to buy him when you don't need it. Everybody is doing that. We are all buying and selling. We are not creating anything. The space has to be created. We have to lead better. We need better leadership. We need better leadership. Let's be let's be honest about it. We need better leadership. Yeah. What's my short petrol? What's my short petrol? What's my petrol? What's my short 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 petrol? What's my me and this guy, and it's here to have gallon. And I asked her to know who about one of one name Piawa. Yes, sir, you are short of petrol. So I was a short of petrol. Yes, Ramo, you are short of petrol. Nana, I don't mean to petrol, you are short of petrol. In the week, how many times now short of petrol? Papa, you are short of petrol. 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 I am Gordon Dogbe from Atoku Kofa in Aplau, Mr. Sky. So for those who still and full, I mean, meals have gotten bad mm -hmm. in our fridges, mm -hmm. should we still go to PRC? My brother, at Lomnava in Sasabi, it's like ECG. It's a married son who caught a slave queen with her husband. Hey. It goes show him, Papa. I don't understand. It's okay. I don't understand. I... Oh, Babylon, you are making me weep. Good morning, Bernard. I have my timetable ready. We. Yes, you know, can. food getting bad is a yeah. serious matter yes, because yes, yes, people yes. are already struggling yeah. by oh. food. Mm. To go to the market these days, it's not, it's not, no, it's not no a joke, no joke matter. You give Ashibega, you know, money to <laughs> your wife Ashibaga. to take to the market and Ashibaga. come back. Yeah, Ashibega is it's a very serious matter. Mm. So what the, the young man is raising there, yeah. you see, that is why the government has got to be concerned. Because people take their money. In fact, many of them even buy on credit. So the month ends, no, you have to pay all the people you owe. Mm -hmm. the By the time you reach home, yes, there's nothing in your yeah. pocket. Yeah. So that is why the government has got to be sensitive. And know that there are people who are struggling because of everything that has happened over the last eight years or so. Yeah. So that you take positive steps to ease the pressure on people's pockets. You are not doing that. The small food they have bought and put in their fridge. Oh, you it's going bad and you won't bring timetable when they say bring timetable you say ah go and do your own timetable I'm a
sorry, sorry. I'm a mabu mabu aki, man. God damn it, you came on. <laughs> Good morning, team. This one says, I have my timetable ready. Since Monday, the light goes off at 9 a.m. and comes back at 5 p.m. This morning, I'm expecting it to go off at 9 a.m. Thank you for the good works. Neo Kai from Malijo. The light just went off at 9.13. All right. How accurate. Kofi from Amasaman. This government is very dishonest and deceitful. They inherited a stable power supply yet claim that they solved it. This is now their problem. They should solve it since they claim to possess the magic wand in power problem solving what are we experiencing what we are experiencing now is an offspring of the PDS candle you say Bernard Bernard uh, Oba you are preaching to the wrong way <laughs> <laughs> See, until we hold them accountable, we we'll continue to lament and lament, and they will continue to put their preference and pettiness before the country's development. Right. Good morning, Bernard. Yeah. I admire the passion with which you constructively criticize each bad government, and I've given up on Ghana. I will not waste my time to vote again because it doesn't improve my standard of living. 